Hey everybody, and welcome to the third episode of the Level Creation Guide for Half-Life. In the previous episodes, we have learned how to create a room with the block tool and how to change the look of our room using the texture tools. In this episode, we will be learning how to fill our room with some of the basic entities using the Entity tool. But first, what are entities? An entity is an object with unique properties that we can place into our level. An example of a basic entity is Barney. Not that Barney. Barney is an object with unique properties in Jack and in Half-Life. But not only just Barney, but every single NPC from Zombie to the Nihilab are entities. There are over a hundred entities we can choose from and place into our level. Let's begin by placing our first entity in our room. Click on the Entity tool and use a 3D view and left click to place an entity anywhere on the floor. You will immediately see Gordon Freeman view model pop up in the 3D view. Don't worry, you haven't done anything wrong. The Entity tool on default places the Info Player Start Entity. You can change this later by going on the right hand side of Jack and change the Info Player Start Entity to whichever you desire. The Info Player Start Entity is the first entity every level starts with. This entity is very simple, as its purpose is to start the player wherever this entity is positioned. Without this, the player will spawn in the center of the level's grid. We can also position this entity using the 3D view. Using the selection tool and double clicking on any entity will immediately open up the entity browser. In this window we can change what entity we want and tinker with its available settings. Right under the word class is a search box. This box allows us to change the current entity to any available entity in Jack. Simply type or hit the small arrow on the right hand side to browse through all the entities. In the right hand side of the window, it gives us two buttons and a yaw rotation. The first button is the Smart Edit button. When clicking this button, it will change the attribute box options to more advanced options we can tinker with. I don't recommend tinkering with these options just yet, as they are quite complicated. To go back, click on Smart Edit button again. The second button is the Help button. By clicking on the Help button, a window opens and Jack offers us more insight with what each option does in the entity. This can be very helpful when first learning about the selected entity. We also have two tabs beside the Class Info tab. The Flake tab are specially added on and off options we can choose. Like the Attribute section, this tab changes its on and off options depending on the entity. The last tab is called Viz Groups. You can add multiple entities to a group to help organize your level. I'll go more in depth with this in a later episode. Now that we're more familiar with the entity browser, let's put it to use by learning some new entities. To make things more organized and easy for us, I have split the entities into two sections. The first section contains the essential entities that you need for every level. The last section contains monsters, weapons, pickups, and ammo entities. I know what you must be thinking. I have to learn 59 new entities? This is supposed to be a beginner's guide. Don't worry, most of these entities are pretty simple and it doesn't require being John Romero to understand them. The essential entities are the player start and light. As previously mentioned, the info player start is the first entity every level starts with. It simply indicates where the player will be spawned when the level loads. Place this entity in any desired location for the player to spawn. Note, placing more than one of these entities will force the player to spawn in the most recent one made. Since we have already placed this in our room, let's move on to the last essential entity. The light entity is the most basic light source Jack offers us. It acts as a light bulb and can be placed anywhere in our level. If we use the selection tool and double click the light entity, we can access the entity browser and change the brightness, color, and even make the bulb flicker or pulse. The flag section also gives us an option to toggle lights on and off when the level first loads. Let's add the light entity to our room. Click on the entity tool and left click in our room using the 3D view window. Double click on the newly made entity and change the entity by scrolling or typing in the search box light. It will immediately change and we can use the viewports to position the light entity in the middle of the room right below the ceiling. Warning. If placing a light entity exposed to the void of our grid will cause the map to either not load or not show any lighting in playtesting. 
And that's it for the first section. Not too bad, right? The next section is even easier. The monster, ammo, item, and weapon entities are all large in number, but are all nearly the same. Let's place a couple headcrab zombies in our room. Click on the entity tool and left click in our room using the 3D view window. Double click the newly made entity and change the entity by scrolling or typing in the search box, monster zombie. Any monster entity can be found fast by typing in the search box, monster underscore. The attribute section for the monster zombie entity may be bare, but the flag section gives us two useful options. Wait till scene is useful when trying to position a monster to wait for the player, and the gag option silences the monster from making any noise. Now that one zombie is placed, let's place another fast. We can quickly duplicate any entity just like we did in the first episode with blocks. Hold down shift and drag click the entity, in our case the zombie, away from the original. This comes in handy when we're placing multiple of the same things. However, duplicating also copies the settings, so be mindful when duplicating an entity. Now that we've created a couple zombies to fight, we need some weapons and ammo. The weapon and ammo entities can be found quickly by typing weapon underscore and ammo underscore respectively. We can choose any weapon available in Half-Life with its ammo. Let's place a shotgun with buckshot ammo for the player to quickly pick up. Create a new entity and change it to weapon underscore shotgun. Position it in front of the player and duplicate it. Change the duplicated shotgun to ammo underscore buckshot. This should be enough for the player to fend off the zombies, but to be sure, let's add some health packs and batteries. Either create or duplicate a couple entities and change them to item underscore health kit and item underscore battery. Place these entities close by the player. If you've been a keen observer, you may be noticing we are forgetting a very important thing, the HEV suit. Don't be ashamed if you forgot it. It's one of the most easy entities to forget about. Create or duplicate an existing entity and change it to item underscore suit. Place this entity on the inside of the player info start entity. At last, we are ready to play test our room. Be sure to save and click file, run, or press the F9 key. A window will immediately pop up showing us various compiler settings we can change, but I recommend not changing any of these unless you know what you're doing. Press OK and the window will close, and you will see a couple of windows popping in and out. Great work! You've successfully playtested your level for the first time. Thank you so much for watching the video. This is the last episode covering the beginner basics and I hope they helped you in your first steps in becoming a level designer. If you wish for more episodes in this series, let me know by either commenting or leaving a like. Thank you again.